All the way my Savior leads me Cheers each winding path I tread Gives me grace for every trial Feeds me with the living morning everybody welcome chester arp church devotional podcast in fact i should say welcome back it's been a break we had a little bit of a break a couple three weeks during the holidays but we're back now we're going to have a reading this morning from first kings chapter eight if you've been with us before you know we've been reading through uh the books of first and second samuel now into first kings if not just know that we're in first kings chapter eight solomon built the temple for the lord uh the ark of the god is brought to the temple, God's permanent dwelling among his people. And now Solomon, after the Ark of the Covenant has come in and God has come down upon the temple with thick darkness to to prove his existence and to prove that he is there with his people, Solomon turns and blesses the Lord. This is Solomon's response to God's presence coming upon the temple. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he will dwell in thick darkness. I have indeed, I have indeed built you an exalted house, a place for you to dwell in forever. Then the king turned around and blessed all the assembly of Israel while the assembly stood there. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who with his hand has fulfilled what he promised with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought my people out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel in which to build a house that I may name, um, that my name might be there. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to David, my father, whereas I, it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, you shall not build the house, but your son shall be born to you, shall build the house for my name. Now the Lord has fulfilled his promise that he made. For I have risen in the place of David, my father, and sit on the throne of Israel. As the Lord has promised, I have built the house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. And there I have provided a place for the ark in which the covenant of the Lord that he made with our fathers when he brought them up out of the land of Egypt. Now, I think this is a a wonderful point in Solomon's life. Now, Solomon's had his issues up to this point. He will have greater issues later on in his life. But at this point, it, this is kind of the culmination of Solomon's life. This is Solomon's life purpose. We talk about that in our world today, I think somewhat to our own detriment as a society because we become overly consumed with practical purposefulness. But I think um, it's cool to see here with Solomon. I mean, Solomon exists for the purpose of building a temple. That That, that is why he is on this earth. He's going to lead God's people. He's going to rule. Uh, but one of his great practical purposes in life is to build the temple of God. This is God's plan. As Solomon said when he blessed the people, David wanted to build the house of the Lord. David had his heart to build God a house once he took Jerusalem and established the tabernacle there and established the people of God there. He wanted to be the one to build the temple of the Lord. And God said, it is good that you have that desire in your heart. You've done well. But you are not the man that I have chosen to build the house of my house on this earth and the reason is because david you're a man of war i want a man of peace to build the house of god on this earth where the people will come together because the lord's house is a house of prayer and a house of peace it is it's a place of reconciliation when god dwells among his people um he he represents the reconciliation he has with them in christ jesus our lord right in the Prior to the coming of Christ, he he was always looking forward to the coming of Christ. It was a guarantee, in other words. And so even we could say the temple of the Old Testament was a place where God represented his reconciliation with his people, ultimately, which will be through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so it it is a, a symbol to the world that God has chosen to dwell with his people and be reconciled to them through the sacrifices, ultimately the sacrifice of Christ, where we have that relationship with God. And so it's a place of peace. It's a place of access. It's where God dwells among his people. In the Old Testament, his cloud descended upon it. it it's where the Ark of the Covenant was. It was the Holy of Holies was. So that that's where God dwells among his people. Uh, he tabernacled among them with the temple, with the tabernacle, excuse me. Now he dwells among them with the temple. 
and ultimately he will come and be among them in Christ. And now in his spirit, he dwells among us in uh, each one of us individually. And as the collective body gathers together, place of access to God. Solomon here rightly points to the the reality of the fact that this is as a result of God's purpose and God's will and God's plan and that God always fulfills his promises. God promised it and he pointed to people's attention back to the promise of God. He promised it to David and now God has been faithful to fulfill that promise. God always keeps his word and his word is that your son will be the one to build my temple. It, it, it will be your son who will do it. And Solomon says, I am his son. He's raised me up for this purpose. I'm going to build the temple of the Lord. And he gets busy about it. And once it's completed, he says, we have now achieved that task, that goal. It's been accomplished. And God has done it through us. Solomon rightly says, I did it, right? Solomon orchestrated the whole thing. Solomon oversaw Sari to build it. But ultimately, it was God working through Solomon to build the temple to fulfill his promises. And that's what God does. God always fulfills his promises, and he does it through people. He does it through people. Now, he can do it supernaturally if he wishes to, and sometimes he does. But it's more often than not, He regularly, he does it through people. And we see that with Solomon here as he builds the temple. He, All the craftsmen, all of the masons, all of the laborers that it took, God used all of them to accomplish his purposes, to build his temple, his dwelling place with his people. What an incredible story of God's faithfulness, God's fulfillment of his promises, and of Solomon and the people's obedience to the Lord. You guys take care. God bless you. Be comforted today that God fulfills his promises. Be obedient to do what he has called you to do. You guys take care. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. You carry me close to your heart and surely your goodness and mercy will follow.